Welcome to Open for Business, the Gallatin Valley's only local business and consumer talk show featuring Tom Eaglehoff. The Man Entrepreneur Magazine Radio called the leading authority in the United States for doing business in small town. Here he is, speaker, author, small business consultant, and Mrs. Eaglehoff's favorite son, Tom Eaglehoff. All right, welcome everyone. Open for business. We air every uh, Saturday live from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain Time on AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. If you'd like to be a part of the big broadcast, go to kmmsam.com and click Listen Live. The call-in number during the show, 406-522-TALK, 406-522-8255. I'm here. You're here. Let's get the show on the road. All right, welcome back, everyone. 70 degrees outside. It's Saturday, June 11th, 2016, uh, 25 minutes before the top of the hour. I want to welcome you to the podcast portion of Open for Business. Uh, each week, I share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years about advertising, marketing, promotion, and building strong, successful businesses. Uh, I do these Open for Business podcasts live every Saturday between 11.30 and noon, Mountain Time, from the studios of AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman and 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. And, of course, we stream worldwide on the web at kmmsam.com. So if you missed any of my previous podcasts, you'll find them all on my YouTube channel or my website at smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. Just go about halfway down the homepage on the left side and you'll find a link to the podcast page so you can catch up on any of my podcasts that you might have missed. So today I want to show you how to spot profitable business trends. Now, last Monday was D-Day, and if you remember, that was a huge um, invasion of uh, Normandy. And successful military engagements aren't based on luck. They're well-planned, they rely heavily on intelligence reports, and the better the intelligence, the more successful the campaign. Uh, General George Patton made a career of reading books of famous military leaders, both living and dead, and by getting inside their heads, he was able to spot trends and tendencies that lead to, led to many victories in World War II. So smart business owners are also proficient at spotting trends and using that information to stay ahead of the competition. So how do these business leaders do it? Well, here's some inside secrets that'll help you get a glimpse into the future. Tip number one I have for you is you can spot business trends if you read, read, and read. So here's the rule to remember. If you spend just 20 minutes each day reading something about your industry, I can almost guarantee that within one year, you'll know more than 75% of the people in that industry. 20 minutes. Either get up 20 minutes early or go to bed 20 minutes later. Now, it doesn't stop there. In order to spot trends, you have to dig a little deeper. So reading about your industry will only keep you informed about what's on the surface. You need to examine the things that affect your industry as well. For example, if you're making furniture, you need to be aware of other industries that supply to the furniture industry. Wood shortages, fabric, stains, changes in styles can all have a effect on your end result. Advanced knowledge of a problem in any of these areas could mean the difference between a loss or a gain in your business. So every business office usually has a stack of business trade magazines gathering dust in the corner that never seem to get read. Well, scan the table, table of contents for articles of interest and tear them out of the magazine and put them in your to-be-read file. Try to read at least one every day. Take it to lunch with you or anywhere else. You can get a few minutes alone to focus. Tip number two, spot business trends by looking at the world around you. My wife is a big fan of the TV show Law & Order. Sometimes there's more to be learned about the world in fiction than in information gleaned from the 24-7 cable channels, Facebook, or Twitter. In nightly TV shows, you can often spot trends that reveal how people are thinking about the events that touch their daily lives. Does ripped from today's, today's headlines ring a bell? <laughs> information sources like the Wall Street Journal or Saturday morning investment shows on radio, TV can often reveal where markets are headed. You can also also uh, find online newspapers from all over the world. Go to refdesk.com, R-E-F-D-E-S-K.com, refdesk.com, and allnewspapers.com, allnewspapers.com. Tip number three, you can often spot business trends using technology. The world is literally at your fingertips. So with a few keystrokes, you can find volumes of information on any topic imaginable. With social networks like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, you can connect with people across the country and around the world. Put out a question and 100 views pop up. 
You can also track all sorts of information about visitors to your website using Google Analytics. And the best part is it's free. Just do a search for Google Analytics. And you can also use a real simple syndication. Those feeds allow you to access articles and tips on various topics by free subscription. When you subscribe to your favorite blogger, that would of course be me, or your favorite columnist, any new articles and posts are sent to you automatically. You'll find my blog going to kmmsam.com, click on my picture, scroll down to the bottom of my bio, and the blog start there. Each blog post has links at the beginning and end that you can use to subscribe. Now, it's a great way to filter information from your favorite sources and improve your productivity. I also use Google Alerts to let me know anytime my name shows up uh, on the web uh, or my company name is mentioned on the web. Also free from Google. Go to google.com slash alerts. Google.com slash alerts. You can also check out your competitors uh, by using that same thing. Just put them into a Google Alert. Anytime they show up, uh, you will be notified. Uh, if their business name or a product uh, they sell shows up. Try to find what they're offering to their customers. Any new direction or change in suppliers or products? How are they talking to their customers? What phrases or keywords are they using on their websites to be more attractive to search engines? Tip number four, great minds think alike. Contact other business owners in small towns similar to yours. In Bozeman, Montana, we might select Boulder, Colorado as a comparable uh, city. Both cities are tourist destinations and college towns with similar populations. Try to find like-minded people in those places who are in your industry and pick their brains. However, just because people are in your industry doesn't mean they're doing everything right. Look for the best people. Look for the ones who are written about in magazine articles in your to-be-read file. Together, you can look for clues for what might be on the horizon. They could be a great source of knowledge and inspiration. Tip number five, we need to spot business trends by looking at economic indicators. The U.S. government, stock market, Federal Reserve all use economic indicators to set policies and examine what the future holds. Now, there's no crystal ball for business, but there's pockets of information that, when combined, can give you a somewhat cloudy crystal ball view of economics and trends. There's no question that customers are more informed when they walk into your place of business. They may know much more as much about the products as you do. The good news is that if they're in your place of business and they're looking for a product, the chances are they're ready to buy. Now, they can either buy from you locally or they can touch and feel your product and go home and buy it online, sometimes for less. The easiest way to combat this, go home and buy it online, is to offer a package deal that they can't compare online. As a local merchant, have you explored offering that option with your suppliers? Can you make a deal with your suppliers to provide packages you can offer your customers? By spending a few dollars more with you, your customers get a better deal by spending a few more dollars than they can get the product online. So remember, they'll also probably have to add shipping charges to their purchase. If they're not an Amazon Prime member, uh, they'll also have to pay $99 to get that service for free two-day shipping. So the final point is this. Use every weapon in your economic arsenal to uh, make buying from you more beneficial than going online or uh, to a local competitor. Be prepared. Be informed. Customers like to buy from experts. And that's the podcast. If you missed any of the previous podcasts, you'll find them on my YouTube channel or my website of smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. Just go about halfway down the homepage on the left side, and you'll find a link to the podcast page so you can catch up on any of my podcasts that you might have missed. So tune in every Saturday, and let's build some successful businesses together.